Hey there, this is Mr. Piercy, and what I'm going to be talking about in this video is how to uh, come up with the rules for what are known as special right triangles, and then how we use those rules to evaluate uh, uh, a right triangle to find lengths of uh, its sides. Now, Special right triangles are kind of important when it comes to mathematics, and you're first introduced to them now in your high school geometry curriculum. And the reason why they're important is because they are going to lay the foundation for things in trigonometry, uh, specifically for something known as the unit circle. Now, we're not going to get that far into the material right now, but for what we need to do here at this point in your education is identify what a special right triangle is, what are the rules associated with a special right triangle, and how do you actually do the math associated with them. So the first type of special right triangle that we're going to look at is something known as a 45-45-90 special right triangle. Uh, in this case, because it is 45, 45, 90, these are congruent angles. So that kind of implies by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem that a 45, 45, 90 triangle is going to be an isosceles triangle, and they are. So here we want to identify what are the rules going to be, okay? That's what we're going to fill in here. So what I have done is off to the side here, I've just drawn a... 45, 45, 90 triangle. And we're going to say, okay, well, how can we establish, you know, using some kind of, you know, pattern recognition, inductive reasoning, uh, how are we going to be able to identify the, you know, a rule that we can use for these types of triangles? Well, again, because these angles here are congruent to each other, uh, that implies that the triangle itself is isosceles. So this side and this side are going to be the same length. Now, the thing is, is that for every 45, 45, 90 triangle, because the angles are congruent to each other, every 45, 45, 90 triangle will be similar to every other 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the rule that I established for one can be applied to every 45, 45, 90 triangle because of that similar relationship. So what is the length of the legs? I don't know. We will just call those x. And based off of the Pythagorean theorem being a squared plus b squared to be equal to c squared, we can just take these values that we have, even though we don't know the numbers, we can take those and substitute them. So here I'm going to say x squared for a, and I'm going to say x squared for b. Now c squared, we, don't, we still don't know what it is, so I'm going, to, I'm going to just leave it as the hypotenuse, c squared. Well, on the left side of the equal sign, the 2x squareds, those are like terms, so those combine to give me 2x squared to be equal to c squared. Well, at this point, what we want to do is we want to take the square root of both sides because we want to identify what's the length of this side c. So at this point here, I take the square root of both sides. And the square root of c squared on the right side of the equal sign, that's just c. Now, on the left side of the equal sign, the square root of 2x squared, you could break those up as being the square root of 2 times the square root of x. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that just to make sure everybody sees what we're talking about. Square root of 2 times the square root of x squared. And just like the square root of c squared became c, well, the square root of x squared will become x. Now, the square root of 2 doesn't simplify. If you try to take uh, type the square root of 2 on a calculator, it's going to come back with uh, what we call an irrational number, 1.414 blah blah blah, as it keeps going on forever. So we leave the square root of 2 underneath the radical symbol because it doesn't simplify any further than that. So in this case, the length of the hypotenuse is going to be whatever the length is of the leg multiplied by the square root of 2. And it works that way for every 
45, 45, 90 triangle. So let's come back to what we have here for our rules. Well, what is the length of the leg going to be? The length of the leg can be anything. It can be any number. So we can just kind of call that x. So the hypotenuse, according to what I just showed you, is going to be the length of the, the leg times the square root of 2. Now, personally, I kind of like to think of it like this, as I like to say the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg multiplied by the square root of 2, because I don't like knowing what, I prefer leg, because that's what we're talking about. But if you want to keep it there as x, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so, taking a look at the examples that we see here in uh, problems 1, 2, and 3, what we're going to look at here is, okay, well, in this case, we have a right triangle, and they're giving us one angle to be 45. Well, the angles of a triangle are all going to add up to be 180 degrees, so if this is 90, these other two have to be 90. And if this is 45, that makes this one 45. So that, that's how I understand I'm working with a special right triangle here. So the length of the leg here and the length of the leg here must be the same. So x must be equal to 8. Well, what about y? Well, y in this case is the hypotenuse. So y in this case is equal to the length of the leg multiplied by the square root of 2. And in this case, the length of the leg is 8 times the square root of 2. Now, you could take that on your calculator and simplify it into a decimal value, but the kind of the point of using these rules is to not simplify them into decimal numbers. We want to keep them as radical numbers because it makes doing the arithmetic actually easier because we don't need to worry about any decimal values. So we just say that the length of the y value, in this case the hypotenuse, is going to be 8 times the square root of 2 units, and that's, that's all we do. So the next example in problem number 2, let me zoom in just a little bit so it's easier to kind of see what we're doing here for these problems. So the next one that we're going to take a look at is pretty similar to what we saw in the last example, meaning that uh, because this is 90 and this is 45, this is also 45, so I know I'm working with a special right triangle. So that means the length of this leg and the length of this leg are the same, so in this case, y has to be 25. No math involved, we're just reasoning about what type of triangle we have. Well, in this case, x is the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg, multiplied by the square root of 2, and in this case, uh, I guess I should say this is x, not h. Uh, the length of the hypotenuse x is equal to the length of the leg, 25, times the square root of 2, and again, we don't want to bother, we don't want to worry about trying to put this into a decimal form, we just leave it like that, and we'd say 25 times the square root of 2, or 25 radical 2, 25 square roots of 2, however you want to say it, and that's what we're going to end up with there. Now this last example is going to throw things off a little bit because there's going to be uh, a type of math that we need to do here called rationalization. Okay. Now once you do enough of these things, you don't really need to show a whole lot of work. You can kind of see what's going on in your head. Now you know, understand, again, because this is a 90 degree angle and this is 45, then this is 45. So we're clearly working with a special right triangle, 45, 45, 90. And in this case, this leg and this leg are the same. So x and y are actually going to be equal to each other. So we really only need to do one problem here. Well, according to what we're doing is we're saying the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg multiplied by the square root of 2. Well, what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify the length of the leg. So mathematically or algebraically, what we need to do is we need to divide by the square root of 2 so that way we can get the leg by itself. So divide by the square root of 2, and I get uh, the hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2 to be equal to the length of the leg. Now, unfortunately, we can't leave the square root of 2 in the denominator. So, and I kind of touched on this the, a moment ago. 
and I'll just bring my calculator in here for uh, demonstration purposes. Uh, if I do the square root of 2 on my calculator, oops, if I want to know what it is as a decimal number, I get this decimal number 1.414213562, and it, it keeps going. The display only can carry so many numbers, but it keeps going forever. Uh, mathematic, in, in mathematics, this type of number is referred to as an irrational number. It is a decimal number that never repeats itself and it never terminates, like pi. You know, pi is the most famous irrational number. Uh, well, what we're doing here at this point is we're saying we're going to take some number and divide it by something that is irrational, something that never ends, and, and so we can't really do that. Okay, so what we wind up doing is we take whatever that radical is, in this case the square root of 2, and we multiply it to both the top and the bottom of the fraction that we have. So in the top, and I'm going to kind of come up here in the white space that we have up here, in the top, the hypotenuse is just going to get multiplied by whatever the square root of 2 is. So I can say the hypotenuse times the square root of 2. And in the bottom, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2. And that's what the length of the leg is. What this is doing here, what we're saying when we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2, is what we're doing is we're changing this irrational number into a rational number. And hence, this, is, this idea or this process that I'm doing here is known as rationalization. So now we can take the hypotenuse, which in this case is 18, or I'm sorry, 19, and I can just substitute it in here for h, and I can say the length of both of these sides is going to be 19 square roots of 2 over 2 for the length of the leg. And if you want to, you could simplify that to be a decimal value, but, you know, why go through the extra step? 19 square roots of 2 over 2, and there is our uh, leg length using the rule for a 45-45-90 triangle. Now the next type of special right triangle that we're going to uh, kind of get involved with here is known as a 30-60-90 special right triangle. Uh, this could be created by taking an isosceles triangle and dividing it in two. Uh, just t pick any corner and uh, drop in an altitude and you divide it into two equal triangles where one angle is 30, one angle is 60, and the other angle is 90, hence the name 30, 60, 90 triangle. Well, this one here, uh, I'm going to kind of take a look at. So here we have another 36, uh, I've just drawn this to be 30, 60, 90. And what I did is I just picked a, I just drew a, a random side length for my legs and then I measured uh, either a 60 degree angle or a 30 degree angle off of one side and then I drew in the hypotenuse. And I, and I don't know what the length of any of these sides are here. So uh, the thing about the 30, 60, 90 triangle is the side that makes up, that really makes understanding these possible is whatever this short leg is. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to say the short leg is going to be uh, x. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at this one here. Now, I told you I didn't measure any of these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab my compass here. And I'm going to say, okay, well, how long is that short leg? So I have it open up to be the width of there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come here and I'm going to make a mark on the hypotenuse. And so the length from this corner to where the pencil point is, that's the length of the short leg. And if I come here, I see, look, uh, the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the short leg, but there's two of them there. 
So the hypotenuse is 2x. Well, I can't really measure this third side. I can't really measure this long leg, you know, kind of like I was doing here, like I could here. And, and, and you know, we could take what's known as isometric dot paper, where instead of having a bunch of squares on it, it would make a bunch of equilateral triangles. And we could kind of do the same thing. But this, this other side here, we can't really measure it and, and figure anything out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem again to figure out what the length of this side here will be. Uh, so I'm going to call this the long leg LL. Okay. So in this case, if I look at the Pythagorean theorem, uh, if we say a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, well, a squared is the uh, is what we'll say x is, but so I'll say the long leg here is b. So I'm going to say uh, the long leg. Well, let me let me not substitute yet. So I always think of the long leg as as side b. So we'll say uh, b squared will be equal to c squared minus a squared. Not really unusual. We've seen problems like this whenever we had to do the Pythagorean theorem and find one of the legs instead of the hypotenuse. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. Uh, so if I take the square root of both sides here, the square root of this and the square root of this, well, the square root of b squared is just b. Now here, because I don't know what the values of these things are, I can't really uh, substitute anything, or I can't really simplify anything here. So I'm going to just say, in this case, it would be 2 squared, or 2x. Nope, I mean, we're just leaving it as c for now. I'm not substituting anything yet. So we would just leave it as c squared minus a squared. Okay, and, and you should recognize this form as, as basically showing you what, you know, very similar to what the distance formula looks like. But now we can uh, do our substitution. So I'm going to say the, the side B, that's the long leg. And in this case, we're going to substitute this here for C squared. We're going to substitute the 2X. So we would say 2X quantity squared minus this one, which would be uh, just x squared. And a little bit of algebra follows. 2x squared uh, underneath the square root symbol would be 4x squared minus 1x squared. And of course, these are like terms. So we wind up with 3 times x squared underneath the radical symbol. Now, if you want to, you can break these apart to make it a little bit easier to see where I'm going to say like the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared. These two statements are equivalent. I'm just kind of breaking up the product into underneath their own radical symbols. And the square root of x squared, the reason why I'm breaking it up is to make it easy to see that the square root of x squared is just x. And the square root of 3, again, because 3 is a prime number, it has no perfect square factors. So the square root of 3 does not simplify as a radical. So we leave it like this. We say x times the square root of 3. And again, because 30, 60, 90 triangles all have the same angle measurements, every 30, 60, 90 triangle that we see will be similar to every other 30, 60, 90 triangle that you ever see. So here, based on what we're seeing, is that the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the short leg times 2, or 2 times whatever the length of the short leg is, however you want to think of it. And the length of the long leg 
is equal to, so here, because in this case, because this is x, and we wound up with x times the square root of 3, I can say the length of the long leg is equal to the length of the short leg times the square root of 3. And in this case, we wind up with these two rules that we can use to now evaluate relatively quickly the dimensions or the lengths of the legs of any 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So let's move on to some examples here and let's see what we get. Okay, so here the short leg, we'll just say that the short leg is x and the length of the longer leg was equal to whatever the short leg was uh, times the square root of 3 and the hypotenuse was equal to the short leg times 2 so in this case we would say 2x and I'm gonna just write out my own rules here just because this is how I like to think of them uh, the hypotenuse of a 30-60-90 triangle is equal to 2 times the short leg and the long leg of a 30-60-90 triangle is equal to the length of the short leg multiplied by the square root of 3. So that's how we're going to start taking a look at these and I'm going to do a few of these for you and then I'm going to ask you guys to try practicing some on your own just to see uh, how well you're doing with them. So the first one that we have, again, because I know this is, six, this is 90 degrees, this is 60 degrees, so this has to be 30 degrees by the uh, sum of the interior angles of a triangle. So in this case, we're given the length of the short leg, which is nice, and so all I'm going to do is if I want to find the length of the long leg, which is x, the long leg is equal to the length of the short leg, times the square root of 3. So in this case the long leg is x, the short leg is 5, and I multiply it by the square root of 3. So here in x I would simply say 5 radical 3. Now the length of the hypotenuse has a slightly different rule. Remember the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the short leg times 2 or 2 times the short leg. So in this case we would say the hypotenuse which is y will be equal to the length of the short leg 5 times 2 so the hypotenuse in this case is 10. Moving on to the second example, again I have a 30-60-90 triangle, so the, they're giving us the length of the short leg again, which is going to make things really easy. Uh, so let's go ahead and find the hypotenuse here, I guess, because that's x. So again, the hypotenuse is equal to 2 times the length of the short leg. So in this case, the hypotenuse is x to be equal to 2 times 14. So x in this case is 28. And for y, we will again use our rule. I have the length of the long leg is equal to the length of the short leg times the square root of 3. In this case, the long leg is y. The short leg is 14 and it's multiplied by the square root of 3 and again we don't worry about simplifying that we would just say it's 14 radical 3 so in the next one example 6 they're gonna try and throw us off just a bit and see how we do because now they're giving us the length of the hypotenuse uh, so again, let's find x first, which is, you know, the short leg. Anytime they don't give you the short leg, that's the thing you have to find first, because if you notice, both the hypotenuse and the long leg are the dependent variable 
of the short leg, which would be the independent variable of these two rules. So in this case, because they're giving me the hypotenuse, I have to find the short leg before I can find the long leg. So here, again, the hypotenuse is going to be equal to uh, 2 times the length of the short leg. And in this case, we're looking for the short leg. So I would say, uh, in this case, x for the hypotenuse over 2 uh, will be equal to, nope, I have that in the wrong order. Uh, this is 32. The hypotenuse is 32, uh, which will be equal to x. So in this case, 16 is equal to x. And now we can find the length of the long leg. So again, the long leg is equal to the uh, short leg times the square root of 3. So y is equal to 16 radical 3. So there's three more examples on this uh, first page of uh, practice problems that we have for the notes. So I want you to go ahead and pause the video and try working out these three examples on your own and see how you do. Uh, and when you're done, go ahead and hit play and check your work with mine. And here we are. Uh, hopefully the values that I'm getting and the values that you're getting are going to match. Uh, pay attention on problem number eight. Uh, in order to find the length of the short leg y, we had to uh, rationalize the fraction again by multiplying the top and the bottom part uh, from here. We had to multiply the top and the bottom part by the square root of 3, which gives me the long leg times the square root of 3 divided by 3 to be the short leg. Now, on 9, we had to do something similar. They gave us the length of the long leg, but in this case, the length of the long leg already had the square root of 3 on it. Uh, so when we divided by the square root of 3, they just simplified it to be 1, leaving me 9 for the length of the short leg. Now, what we're going to be moving on to uh, next is kind of a mixture of problems. And again, I'm not going to uh, really work all of these out for you uh, one at a time. I'm going to ask you guys to try and you know, work them out on your own and see how well you do. Because what's happening now is they're just kind of giving you a mixture uh, where you have to look and say, okay, well, what type of triangle do I have? And therefore, what type of rule will I use? Now, the one thing that I really need to caution uh, you on is as you move forward, in your work with special right triangles and right triangles in general is that a lot of students have a tendency to start looking at every right triangle that even looks like it might be uh, 45, 45, 90 or, or 30, 60, 90. They, even if it just looks that way, they assume that it is. And that's a very dangerous thing to do if you want to make sure that you get your problems right. Uh, this is a favorite tactic of mine on a test is I'll give you something that looks like a special right triangle but is indeed not. Okay, so you have to be able to justify in some way if a triangle is a right triangle before you actually use the special right triangle rules. Okay, do not simply assume because it looks like a special right triangle that it is. Okay, uh, so here this is a mixed practice uh, set where you just need to identify the lengths of the uh, indicated sides according to the rules. Okay, so go ahead and uh, pause the video and try working out as many of these problems as you feel you need uh, in order to uh, get comfortable with them. And the next set that we're going to be looking at is going to kind of take things in a different direction where we have to combine things that we're looking at. But uh, you'll see that here shortly. So go ahead and pause the video. Work out as many of these nine problems as you feel that you need to uh, and to, to be comfortable with things. And then when you're ready, hit play and uh, the answers will appear uh, on your screen. Alrighty, guys, there you go. See how you did. Uh, pay particular attention uh, to problems like 
uh, 16 and 17 because both of those you have to do on 16 you have to rationalize your fraction and on 17 we're starting to see something that doesn't have like a square root of 2 or a square root of 3 as part of the solution uh, so hopefully you did okay with uh, these nine problems if you have any questions of course please get in touch with me and let me know on the next set of problems that we're going to be taking a look at this is where we're starting to see how things are being uh, combined so things that we're going to look at on one triangle to the next uh, they're there or they're kind of taking two types of special right triangles and, and combining them together so that way you know part of one triangle is going to be used to find the length of another side of a second triangle so that's what we're seeing here okay now according and I'm not gonna have the space to necessarily write down all the all the work here for it but let's go ahead and you know run through the process here real quick okay so the length the only length that they're giving me here is that is this and because this is 90 degrees and this is 30 degrees I know that this must be 60 degrees so I can justify I am working with a special right triangle let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here so we can see a little closer so according to what we know uh, the length of the hypotenuse is going to be double the length of the short leg so in this case Z one of the things that it's asking us to do is to uh, to find that one is I'm going to just double the 9 and say that that one is going to be 18 and according to the rules of special right triangles for 30 60 90 the length of the leg is going to be the length of the, or the length of the long leg is going to be the short leg times the square root of three now here if you notice this is not a length that they're asking for however the length of this long leg of the 30 60 90 triangle will be the hypotenuse of this 45 45 90 triangle so according to the rules of 30 60 90 triangles the long leg is going to be nine square roots of three so how do I find the lengths of these two legs here of the 45 45 90 triangle so this is where I do think showing my work is going to be beneficial so I'm going to go ahead and show my work here uh, so remember the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the length of the leg times the square root of 2 for 45 45 90 triangle well the hypotenuse in this case is 9 radical 3 and the length of the leg in this case we'll just say it's X X or Y because they're the same well we have to divide both sides by the square root of 2 to get X by itself so this gives me 9 radical 3 over radical 2 to be equal to X and again what we have to do here because we have a square root in the bottom we have to rationalize it so I'm going to take the square root of 2 that's in the bottom and I'm going to multiply it to both the top and the bottom part of the fraction now when we multiply radicals together we multiply the radicand meaning the 2 and the 3 we'll multiply those together like we normally do so in this case the 2 times the 3 underneath the square root will give me a 9 square root of 6 and in the bottom the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2 now again if you want to you could simplify this to be 4.5 radical 6 but I'm going to just leave it in uh, fraction form so both X and Y are going to be 9 radical 6 over 2 And I'll go ahead and work out one more here for you just to, to you know give you the uh, a good start for these so let's take a look at problem number 20 uh, problem number 20 uh, again they're giving us a combination of a right isosceles triangle and a 30 60 90 triangle so in this case uh, I know that the length of the hypotenuse of the 45 45 90 triangle is just going to be double this so in this case X is going to be 64 and if you notice the length of the hypotenuse of this 30 60 90 triangle is the also the length of the leg of the 45 45 90 triangle so we can 
add a 32 here if you want to see how things are going to be. And now the rest of this is probably something you can do mentally. Uh, the Here again, the length of the short leg is going to be what, you know, or the hypotenuse is going to be uh, two times whatever the short leg is. So in this case, they gave us the hypotenuse to be 32. Uh, so we would say two times z in this case. And so that means when we divide by two, z is 16. And then we do one more operation to find the length of the long leg y. Uh, so the long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. So in this case, y is equal to the 16 that we got times the square root of 3. And again, we don't want to convert that into a decimal number. So 16 radical 3. So we got a little bit more to do on here. And again, I know the, the lengths of the problems are getting a little bit long, but the, the practice is definitely worth it, OK? So take a moment. Go ahead and pause the video and try working out these last four problems. And when you're done, hit play and check your work with mine. And here are the final uh, solutions for the last four combination problems uh, that we have in our notes. Uh, I did get a little over ambitious on this one, and I, I, I put the 6 in the denominator as opposed to the 3 in the denominator originally, and I messed up, so I had to change that here. So you can tell I had to white out some things. But uh, the length of the short leg here is 6 radical 3, so this hypotenuse is 12 radical 3. And here I kind of ran out of room dividing 12 radical 3 divided by radical 2. Uh, I ran out of room to rationalize it, but you have to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 2, and your final result will be 6 square roots of 6 for the two legs of that 45-45-90 uh, uh, triangle. So hopefully uh, at this point you have a good grasp of the rules for 45-45-90 triangle and the 30-60-90 triangle. Uh, how to rationalize things properly uh, and when you need to. And uh, this is going to kind of conclude things that we have for uh, our special right triangles. And again, the, the last thing, again, I just want to caution, don't presume everything is a special right triangle moving forward. You must be able to, in some way, justify that it's a special right triangle before you use those rules. Okay. Uh, but that's going to take care of this. Uh, if you have any questions, please get in touch with me. I'll be happy to help. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching and take care.